Hey everybody, it's Karen Bryan for MMA Heat. I'm speaking with Tony Ferguson, El Kukui, of course, the man uh, really uh, just kicking ass and taking names, if I'm being correct here, uh, all over the UFC's lightweight division. Congratulations. The last time I talked to you, I guess it was before you beat RDA. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a uh, fun time. It's been a long time in training for camp. I'm glad it's all done, but uh, I'm excited to get back into it. And Five rounds wasn't enough for me. I was asking for five more, but I don't think he wanted any more. No, that was an incredible fight. Was it as tough as you thought it would be? Uh, I knew he was going to be a game opponent. Uh, very tricky and just uh, very formal as far as traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the switching of his camps. He was going to have some new techniques and fundamentals. Um, but I knew the object was to go in there and bully him and just to put more pressure upon him and make him want to quit uh, and test that conditioning. And uh, we did that, and he, we were both really well conditioned. I'm very impressed with how his uh, conditioning in his camp was. Um, we were both really prepared for Mexico City, and the fans got exactly what they wanted. Yeah, both of you. I mean, yeah, you went up to Big Bear, I guess, and he went to Mammoth. Um, there was such a commitment there because I guess it's because you knew there's so much on the line for you in that fight. I mean, you really, I know you guys think of it like this all the time, but you had to win that fight. Yeah, it's always a win-win situation, you know, for, for me. When I go out there, I'm always going to give it my all. Uh, I always say that when I leave the table, I'm always going to be happy, uh, regardless, win or lose, uh, because, you know, obviously the victory is <laughs> so much sweeter, and uh, I hate to lose. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously that was the object. And going into this, I knew RDA wasn't going to be able to outwork me, mm -hmm. for damn sure, no way. And uh, I just wanted to hush all the haters, and even from the Lando fight, even from myself, to go out there and, Make sure my stand-up was a little bit more crispy because I've been worrying about grapplers for the last couple of fights, and it happens. So you did get grief on the Lando fight, right? I guess people expected you to not ever get hit ever with a guy that was just coming in there on late notice. What what was the grief that you got? Well, when you're Koku and you're Terminator, I guess, and I talk to myself in a third person, I guess yeah. you have some kind of guff to get. Yeah. But, hey, I'm human. It happens once in a while, but I'm aiming for perfection, and uh, I like to get hit, and that's 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 the best part about me. Is when I get hit, it kind of gets me like going. It gets me like kind of in rhythm and kind of like, all right, you better get your shit together, kid, because you know this could get dangerous. Yeah. And but nah, never felt any danger in that fight. But it was more like uh, it felt sparring. Mm -hmm. And in an RDA fight, that's how I felt like I went into it. I went really relaxed, and we were training at Rain together, so that's how I went into this fight. I was like, this was that rounds yeah. that we never got at Rain. I was like, watch, we're gonna we're, we're gonna be able to get this out. Nice. And sh sure enough. Very nice. Well, long live, long live rain. <laughs> Never forget rain. That was a great spot. Um, you know, how much do you spar? Uh, speaking of that, you know, a lot of people nowadays have kind of backed oh, off yeah. of the sparring. They think, you know, your chin has got a, uh, a an expiration date on it and they don't want to hustle it up too much in practice. How much do you spar these days? Oh, man. The last camp I got zero. Yeah. Zero really? sparring. Yeah, zero sparring. The last couple of camps I've been doing absolutely zero. Uh, my, my coach, my only coach, uh, Billy Scheib. Uh, he's very adamant about me drilling, taking less damage, more uh, technique. And he's really smart about it. And uh, my approach is very cool. Um, I like to beat the body up when I need to and uh, obviously recover because that's so huge. Yep. Um, but I'm able to take a lot of damage like that because I prepare really right. And I've been doing it for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, you can't just jump into it and take a couple of kicks in the rib and expect it. You're going to pull one of those happy Gilmore things when he jumps in front of the, <laughs> the batting cage. <laughs> That's right. So, you can't do it either. at this point, then, Tony, is is the only next fight for you, Conor McGregor? You know, it, or would you take a fight with Khabib? I know people have sort of been talking about that, and to be honest with you, I'm not even sure where everything lands right now. If if there's been fights offered, if things have been accepted, uh, things have been talked about. Uh, everybody's trying to get me to talk a little bit, yeah. but uh, as far as like what Khabib goes, uh, like I said, I'm not going to wrap him with an ass whooping. And same thing with Connor McNuggets and uh, now Jose Aldo in the picture. Right. Um, that made my myself injured more interesting in the last fight. I I made 153 pounds. No nutritionist. I, I did it myself. I did it just with a clean eating camp mm -hmm. and a good grappling camp. And uh, I think 145 is within the future. Really? I'm a hell of a lot faster at 150, 145. And I've been weighed that since high school, but I, I'm very interested to see what that has in order for me. Uh -huh. And um, I don't think conditioning will be an aspect, uh, even 170 eventually from there. Wow. And uh, yeah, I have the frame for it. And um, now, now is about the chance where I'm going to build my elite team. Mm -hmm. um, I've been messing with a little bit of things of switching, but now's the time to uh, kick this shit into high gear mm -hmm. and become that elite fighter again. 
So you you give me your my head is kind of spinning right now because <laughs> if you win nine in a row at lightweight, Conor McGregor wins the title, takes it away from Eddie. So you have an option for a title fight at lightweight. You have an option for a fight with Khabib uh, to determine who would get Conor next if he really is staying out till May, till his baby is born. But now you're saying you could go to 45 and challenge. Uh, well, basically because we know Anthony or Max will get him, but you would you would go down and and try to jump them to get a Jose Aldo fight or just. I'm confused. Just keep things interesting, okay? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a super fighter, and that's what I do. Uh, I'm a different breed. Uh, I'm bringing it back towards the style. And I uh, hope a lot of younger guys are taking notes. And uh, that's what I did when I was up and coming into this sport. So, I mean, that's what's up. That's it. I'm a different kind of animal. Um, I can talk the talk, and I can walk the walk. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. And uh, I'm just keeping it sweet, man. I got, I got these dudes in three moves, Karen. I play chess. And uh, checkmates right around the corner. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, now, see, because I was already, you like, I was one of those people who was really upset at the idea of Jose Aldo retiring. I've always been a fan. I think he's such a fun fighter uh, to watch. But uh, now the fact that you just put you you versus him in my head, now I'm like bugging out a little cuckoo I, I, I love I love the fact of like when, when I get to go out there and, and, and be able to. Uh, express myself as a martial artist uh, bruce lee said it you know i don't like to steal people's minds but he said it i don't i don't want to say it wrong but i know brushing upon it you know a true martial artist is only going to express himself without you know cameras or anything else that's going on like that uh, being up in the mountains in big bear allowed myself to be able to get to that full elite level yeah. and i brought that back with me i don't have to keep going up into the mountains to get that once i did it i, I found that and i brought it back with me and that's peace and serenity so now it's going to be tough for any opponent to be able to, one, talk all the bullshit that they need to talk to give me that energy I need to go and hit the bags. Yeah. Or just be a quiet warrior and, and make it Bushido-like, mm -hmm. which is my favorite because I've had a couple battles like that, which were uh, Josh Thompson yeah. for one. You had Edson Barbosa for two. Yeah. Uh, and then just uh, the last and recent one, RDA for three, mm -hmm. which which were the battles that I love. My, my favorite and the ones that I hang up one glove on my bags in my house. Yeah. I have them hanging up in this cool little mementos that I like because I go in there and I, nobody really knows about it, but I see it and I'm like, man, that's cool. That's cool. That, that's dope. I spent some of the best rounds with some of the best fighters in the world and made them look not like how they walked first in. And it's pretty fun. Yeah, those were amazing fights. Uh, those are three very solid choices. I remember we, you know, I, I just so you know, we talk about you a lot uh, over at Fox when we talk about exciting fighters. Your name is always up there. And the fight you had with Edson Barboza is like one, yeah. of, one of everybody's all-time favorite, you know, just bananas, uh, banana scraps because that was. Mine too. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. You know, did you, um, if, you're, if you're talking about being a quiet warrior, if you're talking about that spirit, does that mean you don't see Connor as a true martial artist because... Uh, he is so much about the public awareness of, of what he's doing. No, no, no. I, I can't. You can't speak for anybody else's mm -hmm. uh, outside their armor or what do you call it? You know, the, in your repertoire, you're going to have a, a set list of skills. Mm -hmm. I choose to put my set list of skills and not just uh, I have a little bit of swag in the talking department. I got that West Coast and yeah, I got yeah. the Midwest tough grappling and I got the Muay Thai, the Muay Baran, old mm -hmm. school style. I've just I've, I've decided to split my chips in different departments. Connor has split his chips in different departments. Where his department in jujitsu, he took the other chips and put it in his talking. So okay. you can have like you know like in the attribute department, you can put your chips in different departments right. and you can play them how you are. But I'm wearing glasses, wearing my shades the whole entire time and letting these dudes talk the talk. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sitting quietly and letting my stack or my chips because with. Nine wins in a row, twenty, what, three or twenty-four and three, yeah. and consecutive victories and performance. But I, I don't know. I lost fucking count. And you know, these guys, I'm not looking towards anything else but besides an actual good fight because mm -hmm. all the other good stuff is going to come with it. All that hard work. Well, I. You know, it's funny, I kind of, well, I wouldn't know if I'd call it an argument, and it was a little bit of a debate, and it was about just that. You know, I was talking to some people, and I said, hey, the thing about Kakui is um, he's worked his way up. He has not called for a title shot before uh, his time, and he has said, you know, he was happy to line people up and knock them down, whereas other people are mouthing off and saying they want the title shot and trying to jump the line. And Go for uh, it. There was a big debate about what was better, and some people actually thought that, yeah, you were maybe doing yourself a disservice in that 
not that you weren't going to win these fights, but that you were going to take more damage on your way to getting to the title. Whereas if somebody was able to talk and jump and do two fewer fights, they might have an advantage. What do you think? Uh, as far as securing my legacy, uh, doing it like how I said I was going to do it, um, you could call it Mystic Mac or whatever. But even before this dude was talking, this shit, I said that how I was going to do it. Yeah. Even when I was in the Ultimate Fighter house, I told Dana White. He asked me, how do you want to get there? And I said, this is a tournament. You got to beat everybody. Mm-hmm. And I straight up said it. And I did say this is my time. And I knew it was going to be a rough and bumpy road. Yeah. It's almost like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or any of those stupid games or, or any tournaments I've ever wrestled. Yeah. You can't talk your way to the damn top. I mean, I've never been one of those fighters or button mashers. Never. Nah, 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 nah. You can't. Right. I've always thought that if you're going to be able to beat the boss or beat the guy, you got to have the skill set and the level mm-hmm. and the stamina to be able to beat and defend that shit. And for me, it's my way to do it. It's yeah. for nobody else to say it. If they do, that's cool. You know, it's their opinion. I think I'm learning how to relax a little bit as far as people's opinions. Um, shrug it off a little right. bit, you know. Good. That shit don't matter. It's cool because I used to care, but I mean that would give me the energy to go and hit the bag. Yeah. But but like I said before, I found serenity and peace in this sport, and that's a bad thing for a bad guy like me, especially for my opponents because right. I'm not. You know, there's no there's no aggression. It's all loose and fluid, and and, and it's about um feeling it mm-hmm. and, and going back and relating to that martial artist on Connor or even Khabib. They are martial artists. That's mm-hmm. why I'm so excited. I don't have to talk any bullshit or talk anything because they're going to give me what I want. Yeah. And so is Haldo. Like, this is the level that you want to get to, like, in, in Mike Tyson's punch out. You're right, you're right there at the top, man. And, you know, I like to be a classic. I'm classically trained. That's how I like to say it. Yeah, yeah. I love so, it. Well, you know, Tony, though, um, Khabib was actually asking for a title shot in between rounds and during his fight with Michael Johnson. I mean, he's definitely taking a different approach. He's hungry. He's got his head, his, his attitude. You know, he's got his own right. I mean, he's hungry. Yeah. He's got a full country behind him. And uh, I, I'm just taking the chill road. And, you know, I'm not trying to let my mouth do the talking for my, my feet. And, yeah. and just, it, I'm getting there. I, I'm enjoying this road and this journey, which is about a martial artist way. You, you have to like the journey. If you're in such a rush, you're going to miss the whole damn journey, dude. Yeah. You're going to blink. You know, take your glasses off once in a while. You know, <laughs> enjoy the scenery. Here, look at me. Show me what I'm looking at. Oh, uh, come nice. Up. I mean, Going up to the ocean. Can't be see, mad at you know, that. So, so, you know, I, it's it's chill. I, I like to enjoy the journey, mm-hmm. and um, when that time comes, when I have to start hustling and start speaking up a little bit, because I know it will come. It will be. You know, I'll put my three piece suits back mm-hmm. on, but I, I it was the best time. My shirt and I had my cargo shorts on. <laughs> it, it was so relaxed and it was so chill, and, and that's what I wanted. You know, the whole entire last couple of fights have been so stressful, just yeah. just uh, having different things in my life, uh, from deaths in my family to buying a house and having new new newborn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, just a the, lot was going on. I, I was going to say, too, 2016 has been a uh, quite a year for you. If you could map out 2017, how many fights would you have? Uh, what would be those names that we would be looking for on the marquee? Ooh, I could say I could see myself fighting about three more. Yeah. I like fighting three, three, three to four times a year, which is pretty logical in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to name names, but I can't do like one and, and then off for two years. Right. <laughs> take take some time off. Yeah, I know, I know, and and thank we thank you for that too, Tony. We like that you're such a busy guy. Uh, and so do I. Uh, like I said, I like to keep my skill set uh, ever evolving uh, and, and keeping it up to date. It's like um, if I'm playing any other sport, if, I, if I'm stagnant, my, everything else is going to get stagnant. I need my creativity. I need yeah. that imagination. I need that shit to flow. And uh, the only way it's going to happen is if uh, I'm putting in the work and hating life for five to six weeks. And on that last week, boom, go in there, fucking do work and collect them checks, baby. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I love it. Um, before I let you go, though, I am going to have to ask you, for a prediction anyway, who do you think will take it, Max Holloway or Anthony Pettis? Uh, these two guys obviously fighting for the interim title and the chance at Jose. I hope my boy Max Holloway takes it. Uh, I know he's doing good. I know he deserves deserves that. Uh, we both kind of deserve some stuff coming mm-hmm. towards us. Um, but, hey, he put in his time and his work. I know old boy's hungry, and uh, he's going to have a rude awakening for Anthony if he ain't ready. And uh, I just think Max is a completely different animal, so I got Max. I think it's going to be an incredible fight. 
Um, yeah. So how soon are you going to sign on the dotted line? How soon will we have something on paper? Today, damn it. Let's go, Khabib. Let's go, Aldo. Let's go, whoever. Connor, come on, McNuggets, Q-Tip. Let's bring this shit. Let's, let's get busy. I, I, I'm bored. I'm oh. healed up. I, I'm ready to rumble. Uh, this is my time. This is my county now. OC, baby. Yeah. Ah, sorry, RDA. But uh, this is this is fun now. This is cool. I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. That's it. Yeah. And uh, let's just do this shit. And uh, look for me to do some seminars coming up soon. So I'll invite you guys pretty soon. So Awesome. Awesome. Keep Very nice. Day. Well, I don't know uh, how much Christmas shopping you have to do for your beautiful wife and your baby and all that. But... Uh, I really do wish you uh, the very best. And again, thank you so much for all the entertainment you provided this year. Hey, no worries. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate you guys. And uh, I love to keep doing what I'm doing. So uh, make sure you guys always uh, tune in. And uh, hopefully you guys have to start buying my shit soon. I'm tired <laughs> of this free stuff. <laughs> so pay-per-view, baby. Let's That's go. right, baby. GP, let's go. All right, Tony, thanks so much. We'll see you soon. All right, later, guys. Bye.